bobby pins and hairpins come in different shapes, colors, and sizes. It's a simple tool used to achieve complex styles. Oh, FYI, these are bobby pins and these are hairpins. Some people call both hairpins and some call both bobby pins. So for the purpose of this video, I'll refer to both of them as bobby pins. While you're putting up your hair, you probably just grab any bobby pin and use as many to achieve the style. Well, the shape and the size of a bobby pin offers different advantages and capabilities. In this video, I'm going to go over five different types of bobby pins. The short closed bobby pin, the long closed bobby pin, the opened short bobby pin, and the opened long bobby pins. If you use them correctly, you end up not having to use as much and have a head full of metal. Let's start with the closed bobby pins. Long or short, the tight closed design of these bobby pins are best for providing strong holds for styles like structured and complicated updos that have little to no movement. They work best at holding your hair in place, but can cause the most potential damage to your hair strands. The metal legs of these pins press hard against your hair strands to hold it in place. This flattens that area and can eventually lead to some cuticle damage. The tight flat legs do most of the work at holding your hair in place, so using them is pretty easy. Make sure the end that bends out is closest to your scalp. Find the best area that will hold most of that section in place, then simply slide the pin in. For a stronger hold, you can catch more hair by scooping up some hair before you slide the pin in. Here's another example of how I do that. You can use your own judgment when deciding whether to use the long or the short closed bobby pins. Just keep in mind to use less of the long ones because they can potentially cause the most cuticle damage. Whichever one you choose to use, remember to always remove them before you go to bed. They do provide a very strong hold, so you will experience snags and damage as you move around in your sleep. Now the open bobby pins serve a different purpose. They're less damaging and gives a looser hold than the closed bobby pins. These should be used for less structured, more movable and loose hairstyles. They also work really well with pinning up loose strays. The legs of these pins are spaced apart so for a stronger hold, a simple twist before sliding in the pin will secure it in place. The major difference between the long and the short is that the long one can capture more hair, requiring you to use less. So that's it. Bobby pins offer great versatility for your hairstyles, but overuse or misuse of them can cause a lot of permanent damage. And FYI, since my hair is usually in an updo, I hardly ever use the closed bobby pins, especially the long ones. If you use them correctly, the open bobby pins can offer the same amount of hold, but in an easier, safer way. Be careful not to use old bobby pins or really cheap ones. They're made of a carbon steel and are supposed to have a protective coat that can keep it from damaging your hair. But if the coat is worn or low quality, the rough spots can cause a lot of cuticle damage and even get caught up in your hair and cause breakage. Once you start to notice the top coat chipping away or any signs of rust, throw that bobby pin away. The bobby pin became really popular in the United States in the 1920s when a hairstyle called the bob cut gained popularity and became the trend at that time. The bobby pins kept the bobbed cut hairstyle in place. Double pointed hairpins are also an ancient design and have been documented in 3rd and 8th century China as well as in 12th and 14th century Korea. These pins were thin and were made of a delicate metal that was easy to bend unlike wood and bone. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new from it. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.